Hello, hi. So it is day 15 of Theta, and I thought I'd do something that I've been wanting to do for a while, um, ever since I started watching um, videos by uh, Miss Loey. Uh, she's Loey Lane on YouTube. I will link her channel below, even though she does not need followers from me. I'm just linking her channel below uh, because she is the one who inspired me to do this because I started looking at her videos about um, this thing that happens kind of I guess in the horror storytelling world is you know people use social media to tell stories um, one very popular one that's actually being turned into a movie was the story of Zola um, which was this crazy Twitter thread about this woman who lived in Miami and was I don't know if she was a stripper or if she was just kind of open to stripping for money and kind of got um, connected with these people and ended up essentially being trafficked like ended up in Texas um, under um, in like this type of prostitution ring situation it was bananas and now it's gonna be turned into a movie so that was kind of a uh, very a fairly well-known version if you haven't heard of it of course i will find um one of the very many articles that were written about it link below as well but there's also this thing that happens in i guess kind of the horror sphere where people will tell these true stories um about something creepy something haunting something weird that happens to them and they'll do it using various platforms uh twitter is really popular because you know you can tell kind of with the written story then you can include pictures and videos and it doesn't have to all be visual um and so i wanted to find one to tell the story on my channel because like i've said before i want to do more horror stuff and so this is really cool um and what these are Kind of called when they turn into being um when it kind of you know you realize it's a fictional story um it is they call it alternative alternate reality games um which is where it's like something is happening in real life in real time but it's not true it's fiction it's, it's basically along the lines of like the blair witch project um Paranormal activity where there were like full on movies that people thought were real because they had kind of that found footage element where it's like people had a video camera and the perspective was from like the person was telling the story through their experience because they were recording it um, in various ways. And so this is kind of a version of that. Um, and so I found a story. Um, I didn't want to do the one, the ones that I've seen kind of. A bunch of ways the one because I know how they go and how they kind of are turning out but also um, yeah I just wanted to try to find one that I hadn't read yet so that I was reading it and experiencing it essentially for the first time um, so this is one I think I've seen it but I just hadn't looked at any of the videos on it so I'm it's very likely and possible probable that People have covered especially Loewe whose channel that I watch all the time um, but I hadn't looked at those videos and so it is a new story to me so I want to share the story here with you so this is it's kind of a long story like there's over a hundred tweets so I won't be reading all of them in one sitting I'll break them up um, so this is part one and this story is the story of a guy who um, who's a writer and he, um, you know, a popular thing that writers do is that they will like book a hotel room or a cabin or a suite somewhere with the idea of being alone for an extended period of time. Either it's like a weekend, a week, a few days so that they can write and, you know, just kind of the solitude and just really just focusing, forcing you to focus on your work. Um, so that's what this guy did. Um, his name is um, Tom Tom Taylor. He's an actual writing uh, writer. He um, of various different comic books, um, but then also you know he's done production work and his work has you know like he's 
very deeply rooted kind of the fantasy sci-fi um i guess yeah it looks like fantasy sci-fi kind of superhero world of um as that's his job um and so this story that he shared on twitter um started in march of last year and it was over the course of a few days where he booked the cabin and he he didn't book the cabin to have a creepy experience he booked the cabin to write but he ended up having a creepy experience and so this is that story so let me get my uh situation together so i can get the stories going okay so i'm going to read it as he uh shared it <clears throat> this is tom taylor so hey i somehow managed to book a creepy log cabin to do some intensive writing and for and writing in for a few days i've been laughing to myself about just how cliche horror movie this cabin is but at 5.30 a.m. out of nowhere, despite it blowing a gale out there for hours, wind chimes start chiming for the first time from the front porch. Now, I'm just about to go to bed, but I'm not sleeping through annoying, spontaneous wind chimes, so I head out there. And I see the wind chimes hanging on a rusty hook. I figure I can reach them, and I walk out onto the porch of my socks, and the door immediately slams behind me of course. I frantically check the door is not locked. It isn't. I'm not stuck on this porch in this gale in my socks and a t-shirt, but I do hear something in the bushes. So I'll pause here. Two reasons. One, hopefully you don't hear my cat deciding that he wants to play with his very loud toy right now. But also, I just want to point out how normal this sounds. It's like you're at a cabin, you're about to go to bed and you hear wind chimes. And now you've seen wind chimes when you checked in. So it's not like these wind chimes are unplaced. You know that there are wind chimes on the porch. Now it's starting to get weird because it's been windy, but the chimes are just now starting. Um, but I will say as someone who has been in a place where there were chimes, um, it may be like, the, you can fairly easily write off the fact that these wind chimes have not been chiming the whole time and just say well you know the wind might have been blowing in a different direction where they didn't pick up the chimes the, if the wind chimes were rusted they might take a minute to kind of get going and really start chiming in the wind because they might be older so I could definitely see how you could write this off as odd but not concerning so <clears throat> Let's go back to the story. We left off, he heard something in the bushes. I don't think much of it. There's been possums running all over the roof all night. Cute Australian possums, not the we those weird US ones. It's the bush, things are allowed to move in bushes. So he's in Australia. I managed to stand on my tippy toes and grab the rusted wood wind chimes from the rusted nail they're hanging on and I hear the noise again. Now I'm kind of giggling to myself because of how creeped out I'm feeling. So I grab my phone to take a photo of the murder cabin I'm writing in for a few days. Here it is. So here's a picture of the cabin. And yes, it does look murdery. <laughs> um, it just looks really rustic. And you know, if this was, I don't know, 30 years ago, this would probably look normal and fine and not murdery. But because it is 2019 during here, you know, these kinds of cabins are what we see in horror movies. This is like a prime horror movie scene straight out. Like he said, it's pretty cliche. So it looks a little murdery. And straight after I take the photo, there's a flash. I check to see if my phone's flash is on. It is. I try to turn it off to take another photo, but something flashes over me. And it didn't come from my phone. And there's the sound again, but this time it's heavier, like a footstep. And there's another flash against the wall of the cabin. I pull my phone out of my pocket, thinking I've left the torch on, which somehow, which I somehow have. 
and I managed to shine it in my own face as I tried to turn it off to take another photo of the cat. So quick sidebar, um, from what I've determined, torch, if you are in Australia, it's your flashlight. So he's just trying to determine if he left the flashlight on his phone on, you know. it's So imagine, it's nighttime, you're in this cabin, so you very likely have turned on your flashlight to go outside to see what the heck is happening with these wind chimes. Back to the story. But then I realized I didn't shine my phone in my face. Something else flashed in my face, and my brain is yelling at me. I'm telling myself I'm being stupid and that I did flash my own face and the footstep was probably a kangaroo or something. So I turned to confront the animal making the sound and, and at 5.30 a.m. in the dark, outside the murder cabin, someone is standing there. I can't see their face. They're wearing a head torch flashlight. And I'm running. I know I slipped at some stage in my socks as I ran up the porch. I definitely kicked the wind chimes. I ran through the door and slammed it shut and locked it. And here's the thing. Several tweets later, I'm sure it was probably just a super early morning jogger or something who was curious about the guy standing in his socks taking photos of a cabin with a flash. But if it wasn't, I'm letting you all know, just in case. And here's this helpful picture I accidentally took mid-panic run, if you need photographic evidence to go with this testimony. And it, so this is definitely a mid-run picture accidental day because it's mad blurred, like you were just trying to get out of Dodge. And you know, I always appreciate someone that pieces out accordingly you're just like you know what so what's happening right here is a no from me i'm out i i'm a fan of someone that that pieces out <clears throat> okay back to the story update i just heard the wind chimes again the wind chimes i know for a fact aren't hanging up anymore this is screwed i'm not joking Lying in bed and the bedroom door just suddenly blew open with a bang. Oh, come on. And the handle, as you can see, is off. So I'm going to stop here at this cliffhanger of the story um, and continue it in the next video. But so far, it's like this man just booked a cabin trying to have himself his own little writer's retreat, which is very common. Um, for writers to do. I've heard plenty of stories of writers having to like go somewhere and be be quiet and focus. Now for me, I am not a, I need to be in de deep silence and solitude to get things done. Like I can, I can be in silence in a nice hotel in the middle of the city um, and still kind of be productive. But I get the I get it when people have to do this and you kind of have to focus everyone has their process and so I completely understand when people take these kinds of trips and do this it makes perfect sense and it's a very common thing that writers do and so I find it quite funny that um, you know he just booked a cabin like he was not trying to do anything but write and now he's in the middle of what sounds like a potentially I don't know what it is at this point because it's like it's you might say it's kind of some type of haunting but is it because he's you know the door is windy so it's very likely the door could have just blown open because it you know the, the cabin looks older so it's not like it's a brand spanking new cabin it could have crickety doors things that don't stick as well when it's windy if it's been blowing really hard which is what it sounds like that could have caused that like there's so many things you can explain away right now now seeing the person is creepy but if it's 5 30 in the morning we all know that there are people who get up 
you know, before the sun rises or just as the sun rises, is rising to go for early morning runs. The person is wearing a flashlight on a helmet or on a hat, probably a helmet type of one, either around their head or on some type of head contraption, they're wearing a helmet or, a, I'm sorry, a flashlight. So that makes sense. Like this is all sounding, it's an odd set of circumstances, but it's all sounding very reasonable. It doesn't sound crazy um, or it doesn't sound very out of the ordinary, but I can definitely get why he might be a little creeped out um, for sure. So that is it. Um, we'll be back for part two. I don't know how many parts this is going to be because it's like I said, it's over 100 tweets. So it's going to be a tale, um, but I just don't want to be on here for um, you know, a really long time kind of talking through it. I want to kind of space it out. Um, so I'll be back for the next part. Um, but I would love your thoughts. So what do you think is happening? Um, like, what do you think is going to happen next with kind of where we are? Let's all kind of guess and see. And of course, I'm not going to read it until I read it with you so that we're reading it together, essentially. Um, so yeah, what are your thoughts in the comments? What do you think is going to happen with Tom um, now that <laughs> the door is broken and it's, you know, the crack of dawn and things are already kind of creepy. So that is it for me for Veda Day 15. Thank you for tuning in to my uh, viral scary story reading. Um, I hope you enjoyed it if you think it's cool i'm going to look for more of these but i wanted to go ahead and get it started with this one which looks like an interesting one so i think we picked an interesting one to go with um so yeah i hope you come back for the rest of it um it was great talking with you and i look forward to the next time that we can chat again